Hey guys, this is the seven inch F3 monitor from FNV. They actually make several different monitors. They have four in total, two versions of their F1 monitor and then two versions of their F3 monitor, which is one of their more advanced ones. So this is the F3 HDSDI version, which retails for around $500. You can actually start with the F1 for around $200, which is really cool. So they have a nice range of selection for people. The first thing I noticed about this monitor was the very interesting material that it's made out of. It looks really cheap, actually. It kind of looks like, um, you know, not like a Lego material, but something kind of like that. Um, but it's pretty tough, so it makes it very light, too. So don't be fooled by the way it looks. This monitor doesn't necessarily look like it's an animal, but it's pretty tough and I really like how light it is for you know how much hardware is on this thing. It is powered by Sony MP batteries, so you can get you know all kinds of different options for that. Obviously on the back, if you look, we have lots of HDSDIs as well as our AV1 and 2 in and out. I think it would have been nice if they had an HDMI in and out on this monitor because um, a lot of the ones in the same price range have that feature. But they give you the HDSCI, which at $500 is really cool. There's very few monitors at that price point where you can get HDSCI. So we also have a headphone output as well as uh, power, of course. Another nice thing on the F3 monitors from FMV is you have a really nice swing out shade. So you have something like that. It's hard as opposed to um, using those cloth ones. Uh, or the ones that Velcro and you have to fiddle with. So it's nice that it's built in. But if you don't want to use it at all, you can actually remove it from the top. It's a little difficult, but it comes off like that. Set that aside and then you have your nice, you know, small monitor setup. When it comes to the price, I think they are right where they should be. There's a couple things I would have liked to see, but when you look at the features they do include, I think it balances out in the end. For instance, this monitor does have uh, focus peaking, but it does not have any way to check your exposure using a monitor function. So uh, you do have focus peaking, but no false color or zebras. And you don't get the HDMI pass through, but at the same time you get HDSDI, which is awesome at a price range of around $500. The other thing that this monitor does much better than other monitors I've worked with is actually showing the image. It is very sharp, and this monitor just looks so much more accurate than other monitors I've worked with. It gives me a much better representation of what my camera is actually capturing. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at some of the features of the monitor, some of the input settings and whatnot. So, first thing we're gonna do is see how long it takes to start up. You can tell we have our battery set up because the red light is on on the power button. So I'm gonna press this, see how long it takes to start up. I already have the camera set to live view. Blue screen for a little bit. And there it is. So first let's go ahead and just jump in the menu and see what we have here. Um, we have brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, color temperature, and negative. Let me go down one. Obviously language, we have our flip and uh, positions for vertical and horizontal. OSD timeout, um, and then the transparency. Uh, whoops, looks like the menu just disappeared. Go down a little more. And then we have a uh, display ratio, which we're gonna talk about in a second. Blue screen for calibration, and then the flipping horizontally or vertically. And then we have volume, um, depending on you know what kind of camera you're using and whether or not you need a playback sound in your monitor. So if we hop back out of that, you'll notice on the very end here, this button here, it's like a kind of like a pill shaped or um, oval. And if you push on that, it's going to switch the input mode. This isn't switching the input, this is the switching how it is actually formatting the screen. And FMV has done an amazing job with uh, making this monitor work really well with DSLR. So we're gonna go through each of them. The first one is record. So I go back, you can see on my camera, I get a nice full size uh, screen. And just to show you, I'm gonna cycle through the info. I'm gonna hit it once, twice, three times, and then once again. So let's go fill the screen with information. Normally when you hit info on other monitors, this whole thing shrinks down to a tiny little square in the middle. This monitor doesn't do that. It takes into account all the information, but it doesn't do that, uh, you know, it doesn't scale things down, which is awesome. So this way you can easily see, um, if I hit record here, we still have all of our information and we have it on a nice big screen. 
So that's the record. Now let's go ahead and hit it again. And it's switching over to playback. Uh, you'll notice it cropped off the top a little bit, but the reason for that is if you're doing a lot of playback, we can hit the playback button on the camera, let it load, and now it properly displays for playback. This way, we have a very nice um, you know, frame for when we're playing back footage for yourself or clients or whatever. And we switch it again, and then you have preview, which is just another visual setting depending on which camera you have. And what preview allows is for that strip at the bottom. So um, if you use that all the time, this is a great setting. You still get a larger screen um, size or it's displaying more on the screen than other monitors, um, but it's still gonna give you that little strip of information at the bottom. So three different ways to display the image, which I think is awesome. It really lets people tailor it to how they use a monitor and they like to have their information set up on the monitor. So that's really cool and I'm glad that FMV did that. So in conclusion, I would say the cons are that it does not have HDMI pass-through. So if you need to run to a second monitor, you're gonna have to do something else. You can't just run it straight through the monitor. Another con would be that you only have focus peaking. You don't have any false color or zebras, which you know other monitors for around $500, you get those. But on the pro side, you have an incredible image you have a very light, sturdy build, and you also have the HDSDI, which is really cool to have at only $500. And do keep in mind, this is the more expensive monitor, but you can also pick up one which has HDSDI for less. So check out FNV. I'll put links to all the monitors that they offer. Go to DSR Video Shooter for more reviews and tutorials, and I'll see you guys online.